this is Sundar Ravindranathan here. Hey guys, how is everybody doing? Awesome? Great. So, what are we going to deal today? Today, till now, we have been dealing a lot about tropical regions, right? Take, for example, India, regions that are near to the equator, where the climate is a lot, lot, you know, I would say congenial and very friendly, right? Even if it rains, it doesn't rain so heavily. Even if it is, uh, you know, summer, it is not so hot. Or winter, it's not too cold. Extremes don't happen much. Is it not? However, now today, we are going to deal with the chapter life in the temperate grasslands. So what are grasslands, guys? Can you uh, answer me what are grasslands before I move on? Come on. What are grasslands? Regions where the majority of the vegetation is grass. As simple as that. Right? Majority of the vegetation. There will be on and off, there will be trees also. Few trees which suit the soil fertility will grow there. But majority will be grasslands only. Grass only. So such regions are called grasslands. And today we are going to deal with the grasslands in the temperate regions and how life happens there. Is it not? So interesting. All right. So shall we move on? Okay. Let me start. So young wonders, guys, in case you are wondering, right, uh, about Vedantu Young Wonders, if you're new to this channel, this channel is for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade kids, academic as well as non-academic. It's a bouquet of offerings which are there. So if you are a part of this channel and you follow the channel very closely, we will ensure you are covered, you grow intellectually by all means, academically as well as non-academic. So do not forget to subscribe to the channel. All right? Awesome. In case you are already following us, you love the, you know, uh, the way, you know, teaching happens. Life at Vedantu Young Wonders happens. You want to learn from master teachers of Vedantu Young Wonders personally. Guys, there is an amazing opportunity for you. We have come out with a subscription. A subscription which is going to give you unlimited live sessions with quizzes, fun learning, right? And you become super solid to compete with your fellow students. That's what you want, right? You want to hold your heads high in front of others, yeah? And along with that, you, whenever you want, right? The general problem is when we, when we miss something and we want to go through it again, you don't have the opportunity. Now here, Vedanta Young Wonders provides that opportunity where you can have, you know, I mean, uh, you know, through this subscription, you would be able to watch the replays again and again, any number of times with live quizzes as well as uh, leaderboards. Cool? Awesome. Now, apart from this, whenever the teachers are giving you the notes, you guys will be able to download the notes there. You know, the content is completely downloadable. So, but it applies to the, you know, the PDFs that you can download with the handwritten notes that the teachers are giving as they teach or take the class. You guys are clear? Awesome. Lovely, right? So, all right. One very important thing that differentiates, uh, you know, a very, very bright learner and someone who finds it a little challenging is, how will you get all your doubts clarified? Is it not? So typically, you will see that, uh, uh, you know, inside these sessions in the subscription, you will be able to clarify n number of doubts with tests and assignments. And guys, 5,000 plus along as a bonus, all right? Topic-wise, chapter-wise course access is also given to you. And if you're preparing for competitive, that's course access as well. Make use of it, guys. Uh, it's, it's a great opportunity. You know why? So many features, so less price. All right, the details are there pinned to the description box. So go to the link, look at the features, and if you want to subscribe, go ahead and to get an additional discount, use this coupon code SRPRO. Cool? So price-wise, 11 rupees per class for a one-month subscription. Wow, guys. For one class, just 11 rupees. It's like buying a pack of blaze, right? It's like buying a party pack of lays. You can see that here. Yeah. All right. So typically, guys. Yes. Once again, the details for you in the description box. All right. And the coupon code is SRPRO. Now, what are the types of regions in the temperate uh, grasslands? The prairies and the wells. This is a type of vegetation, guys, frankly. So prairies and the wells, we'll let us speak about them. 
Yeah, ready all of you? Come on guys, if you guys are with me and you're pretty eager, give me a yo, come on, let's move on fast. Awesome. Okay, so grassland is a region where the majority of the vegetation is grass or grasses. 25% of Earth's land surface are grasslands. Wow, that's a data point to remember, right? Now, climate and soil, there are certain places which are fertile. Whenever in grasslands, lot of wherever a lot of rainfall is there, that soil is very fertile. You can even grow other crops as well. Okay? So these can be divided, the grasslands generally are temperate and tropical. Today we are going to speak about temperate. So the prairies are the temperate, temperate regions are what? Mid-latitudinal regions, guys, where extreme climates are found, right? So yeah, between the polar as well as, yeah, typically the mid-latitudinal regions. So prairies are temperate grasslands found in North America. All right, you see the picture there? Prairie, that's a prairie grassland. And they are treeless generally, all right, near uh, the low-lying area, woodlands can also be found. You see that? That is also there. Bounded by the Rocky Mountains in the west and Great Lakes in the east. Major part of US and Canada are temperate grasslands. Cool? Now coming to the climate. So climate typically is extreme. That's the major difference between tropical and uh, temperate, right? You will have warm summers, very, very cold winters. So summer will not be hot. All right, uh, warm only. Winters will be cold. Generally, it's a very cold uh, you know, climate only. The annual rainfall is average, moderate, and ideal for the growth of grasses. <clears throat> Chinook is a local wind blowing in this region because north-south barrier is there because of which uh, this wind is created, Chinook blows in the region of temperate. Now, what kind of uh, plants and animals are there? Generally, as we said, as I just spoke about, they are treeless, grasslands. All right, but wherever water or rainfall is there, small trees like willows, elders, poplars are there. Okay, so you will see that, as I said, Wherever a lot of rainfall happens, crop, human crops can be cultivated. Farming is possible. So the prairies are called as granaries of the world because a lot of wheat production happens. What? Wheat production. So prairie, grasslands, you need to remember, prairies are regions where a lot of wheat, surplus wheat production happens. So wheat is major. So other crops are potatoes, soybeans, cotton, alfalfa. Right? So cattle farms, ranchers, generally these people are, you know, sturdy people, strong, and they are called this region, they are called cowboys. How many of you have seen cowboys? Yeah? Yes. So, all right, when it comes to animals, bison, American buffaloes are very common. All right. And uh, rabbits, coyotes, gophers, prairie dogs, small ones, you see, right? Those are prairie dogs are also you know, common in this region, popular. So this is about the flora and the fauna in prairie regions. Now, how about the people? People are very, very hardworking and do, they do a lot of farming with technology. And the entire US is known for that. Guys, a lot of agriculture farming happens in US, by the way. All right, however, their style of doing agriculture is very different because everything involves machines and very, very less of manual labor. Right? So US as well as Canada are two most developed countries in this region of prairies. Tell this, are you clear? Simple, right? We haven't had uh, any challenging data points to, uh, you know, to handle. So give me a yo guys, if you're pretty clear, tell this. Come on. Awesome. Great. Now, dairy farming, all right, as I said, I part, as part of the agriculture, even dairy farming is a major industry. Uh, all right, lot of industries are also there because of mineral deposits, especially coal and iron in this region. And they have very, needless to say, right, very sophisticated 
uh, transport networks, roadways, railways, and canals, typically. So all three means. Roadways, railways, and water, uh, waterways, all three are very strong. So a lot of industries are present here. So now coming to the next type of temperate vegetation, which is the wells. Wells are grasslands, temperate grasslands found uh, uh, near South Africa. So they are rolling plateaus with uh, varying heights. It will not be like typical flat grass, guys. There will be grown up grasses. All right. How grown? Uh, you know, to what extent? 600 meters to, all right, uh, 1,100 meters. Right. So elevated, elevated grasslands, right? Elevated grasslands where, uh, which are a little high. It's like it's a, a little higher than the hills. Yeah. So they are typically, the wells are in South Africa, bound by the Drakensberg Mountains on the eastern side. All right. And what are the regions? South Africa, Lesotho, Switzerland, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and Namibia. These are the regions which where wells, temperate wells are you know, uh, covered. They cover these regions. South Africa, Lesotho, Switzerland, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and Namibia. So typically, right, the African regions, the South African regions. This region is drained by the tributaries of rivers Orange and Limpopo. These two rivers move in this region. So now when it comes to wells, all right, they have a mild climate because of the Indian Ocean, the influence of the Indian Ocean. Summers are short and warm and uh, they receive rainfall mainly during summer. Guys, during summer they have rainfall, November to February. All right, and winters are very cold and dry. Temperature is somewhere like 5 to 10 degrees centigrade. July is the coldest month. All right? So November to February, they have their summer months, but rainfall happens at that time only. Winters are cold and dry. Typical temperature is 5 to 10 degrees. July is the coldest month for wells. Clear? Flora and fauna. So what kind of vegetation are the plants and animals are found here? Guys, uh, these grass, uh, this type of grasslands, vegetation is very rare. You can see that everything will be dried up. Grasses dominate the landscape. Mostly it will be small grasses. Red grass grown in bush wells. Acacia and marula are present in high wells. These are uh, types of vegetation. All right. Lions, leopards, cheetahs, kudu are the primary fauna, the primary animals found there. Cool? So the major difference is the vegetation cover itself is very sparse. At least in uh, prairies, you will see vegetation wherever rainfall is there. And you can also do the farming as well. But here, the vegetation is very sparse. Right, the, the vegetation generally is very, very sparse. And uh, it is you will see only these grasses which are there in the grasslands. You guys are clear? Now, red grass is found in the bush wells. All right. And uh, there are two different types, uh, two different types of, uh, you know, uh, the grasses, acacia and marula, they are present in the high wells. So there are three vegetation which we speak about, red grass, acacia and marula. So regarding animals, lions, leopards, cheetahs and kudos. Peoples, more of cattle rearing and mining, right? So they less of uh, uh, typical uh, crop farming, no. Sheep rearing is most important occupation here because of this climate. They have there is a large production of wool with this sheep. Dairy farming is another important occupation. So both sheep rearing, dairy farming are very very common in this uh, well, temperate wells. So soil is not very fertile. All right, but wherever less fertile, you know, uh, places are there where fertile region is there, they still grow crops. What crops? Again, maize, wheat, barley, oats, and potatoes. Maize, wheat, barley, oats, and potatoes. So when it comes to cash crops, tobacco, sugarcane, and cotton are also there. Right? These support, these crops support that, uh, you know, vegetation. Support that type of land. So they grow it. Even if the soil is a little less fertile, they still go ahead. You know, they'll be able to grow it here. 
but they choose the place which is more fertile than the normal well region. So wells have a rich, rich reserve of minerals. Right, iron and steel industry, all right, has developed where coal and iron are present. So similar to, uh, you know, prairies, they also have coal, wherever coal and iron is present, they have, you know, the iron and steel industries. Johannesburg is the gold capital of the world. It's known for gold and Kimberley is known for diamond. The most famous Kimberley diamond is from this region. So you should, you should not feel, for, you know, forget wells, right? Okay, guys, shall I do a quick recap for all of you? So when it comes to prairies, I'll start from here. We all know what are grasslands. So prairies are temperate grasslands in North America, right? Uh, and typically they are, you know, uh, they cover major parts of US and Canada, Rocky Mountains in the West and Great Lakes in the East. Climate is, uh, you know, generally, you will see extreme temperature, warm summer, very, very cold winter. Rainfall is moderate. Local will Chinook blows, all right. And um, generally there are treeless, only grass. However, there are play areas where the good water rainfall is present. Willows, alders, poplars are growing. All right. Generally any place where rainfall is more than 50 centimeters, they do farming as well. Because of large production of wheat, it's called the granaries of the world, these prairies. Apart from this, potato, soybean, cotton, and alfalfa are also grown here. Uh, people, sturdy men, take care of the cattle farms and ranches. Uh, with respect to animals, bison and American buffalo are very common. And rabbits, coyotes, gophers are prairie and prairie dogs. With respect to people, they are hardworking. They do farming with very modern technology. US and Canada fall here. And dairy farming is one major industry. Apart from this, because of large presence of coal and iron, Iron and steel industry, it's a very, very huge, you know, industrialized region. And, and they all, they have to support that. They have a very, very good support or network of roads, rails, and canals. Now coming to wells, they are temperate uh, grasslands of uh, South Africa. And uh, they are elevated region. It's like mountains. In fact, a little taller than the mountains. Bound by dark Drakensberg Mountains on the east, South Africa, Lesotho, Switzerland, Zimbabwe, Botswana, and Namibia. These are, uh, you know, regions covered by wells. All right, and the tributaries of reeds, uh, rivers, Orange and Limpopo go here. Uh, climate is mild because of the influence of Indian Ocean. Summers are very short and warm, receive rainfall mainly during the summer months only, which is November to February. And winters are very cold and dry. Uh, coldest month is uh, July, five to 10 degrees centigrade is the average temperature. Now, flora and fauna, Vegetation is very less in wells, generally. Grasses are the major ones that you can see. Red grass is grown in bush wells. Similarly, in high wells, we have Akoshia, Akashia, and Marula. Lions, leopards, cheetahs, and kudus are common, primarily. People, wells, they do a lot of uh, cattle farming and uh, mining. Sheep rearing is a very common occupation because of which a large production of wool happens. Dairy farming is another occupation. So soil is not that fertile, but uh, wherever soil is a little fertile, they grow, they grow maize, wheat, barley, oats, potatoes, even cash crops like tobacco, uh, sugarcane and cotton are also grown. They have rich reserves of minerals, wells, minerals like uh, gold is there, diamonds are also there in Kimberley, uh, Johannesburg is the gold capital of the world, iron and steel industry has developed where coal and iron are present. So guys, I hope now all of you are clear. Give me a yo guys, come on, before I move on. Come on, come on, come on, give me a yo. If you guys are clear. I hope it is right. It's pretty simple and straight. Okay, now, guys, uh, just a, a quick, you know, one a quick reiteration on Pariksha. We are done with the year syllabus almost, almost. So once we complete this, the, the chapters, we'll be starting with Pariksha. So for a few subjects, we have already started Pariksha, like English and all. So it will happen for uh, social science as well. So watch out, be there. And yes, I hope you are pretty clear about life in the temperate grasslands now. Hit the like button, let me know you liked it. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. All right, until I meet you, 
Uh, guys, 8 p.m. we have a lovely session. Again, a Pariksha session on English. Please do join. Do not forget. Okay? So, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. So, I will meet you at 8 p.m. Until then, this is bye-bye from Sundar Ravindranathan. Take care, guys.